stand up and worship. Let praise be a weapon that conquers the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and we claim your victory. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We'll see you break down every wall. Watch the giants fall. You cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift you high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. Let faith be a song that overcomes the raging sea. Let faith be a song that calms the storm inside of me. Let it rise, let faith arise. We'll see you break down every wall, watch the giants fall. We cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift you high. With the creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. Oh, 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 this is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise. We'll see you break down every wall. Watch the giants fall. You cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side forever lift you high. The creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. And when I look at the space between what made to me and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire. Standing next to me, there was another in the waters, holding back the seas. And should I ever need a reminder of how I've been set free, there is a cross that bears the burden where another died for me. 
There is another in the fire All my dead left for dead beneath the water I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore And should I fall in this space between What remains of me and this reckoning Either way, I won't bow to the things of this world. I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire standing next to me. There is another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need a reminder? What power set me free? There is a grave that holds no body. Power lives in me. There is another in the fire. Oh, there is another in the fire. And I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him i can hear the roar of the heavens as the space between where stand i can feel the ground shake beneath us as the prison walls cave in nothing stands between us nothing stands between There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come what may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. I know I will never be Are you guys sure you got this? Yeah. The twins are plugged in. Baby's asleep. How hard can this get? We're men. Besides, I bumped into Chuck Norris at a Pizza Hut once. I think his powers rubbed off on me. Get out of here. Go on, enjoy your mommy getaway weekend. Oh, this weekend was a bad idea. You remember what happened last time we watched the kids? I'm not a pinata. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna need help. Use of this product may alter your perception of reality.
All right, everything looks the same. This is a joke. Guys, 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 it's like the Sahara in this cup. Can somebody hit me with some juice? <laughs> and listen, pulp, no pulp, doesn't make a difference to me. You're the ones dealing with the diaper. Mom goggles. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Sweetie, I need you to sit on your bottom. Listen to Daddy. You sit on your bottom, okay? Daddy's gonna come get you. Don't, don't, don't move. Don't, 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 don't dance. Just sit on your bottom. Okay? Daddy's gonna come get you. Ah. Whoa, 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 whoa! Don't you try to stop me. Baby made a poopy, yes you did. Where are your mom goggles? They wouldn't fit over my hazmat suit. Take this. Oh, oh. You're so cute. Huh? And then the little boy <laughs> rocked his mommy. Oh, I love you forever. I like you too. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. Oh, well you take it and you fold it from corner to corner. No, I'm, I'm asking the question, how do moms do all of this? How do they handle it all? Well, maybe they have goggles we don't know about. It's as if God gave moms a special way of looking at things, you know? Okay, who taught you servanthood? Who modeled grace? Who gave you a taste of what God's love could look like? My mom, Mr. T, and my mom. Anyway, I, I just think God gave moms a special way of looking at things. Hey, honey. Hey, how's it going at home? It's all good. Guess you could say I'm starting to catch a glimpse of what your world looks like. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. Mama. Hold on, your daughter wants to say something to you. I did mama. She says she misses you. And she realizes how important you are in her life. And she doesn't know how you do it. And she knows that she can't make it without you. She said all that, huh? I don't know if she said it. But it's what I wanted to say. And I should have said it a lot sooner. I thank God for you. The twins. Um, it, it was nothing. We, we have to go, okay? Um, lo love you, Mommy. Maybe some people could relate to some of the things in that video. Um, I want to wish all of our mothers and grandmothers and caretakers here a happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We would not be who we are without our mothers. Um, and I know today can be a difficult day for some people, and we want to recognize that as well. But we want to celebrate and thank, excuse me, thank God for the mothers and the wonderful women that we have in our lives. So I know our kids have some whiteboards in their hands, right? So you're going to get to use that a lot in a little bit. But to practice, I want to challenge you kids. Write down something awesome about your mom, all right? I want to see what kind of answers we come up with. You can hold them up. 
to me when you've got it. Something awesome about your mom. Does anybody have something written down? I can't read that, Eva. What's it say? Listens to you. Oh, a question mark? 911. I don't think that's the right answer. What's that? She is kind. Very good. Yes. So that should get your wheels turning. If for some reason you forgot what today is, here is your reminder to celebrate your mom today and to tell her how much she means to you. Uh, but welcome to New Garden Church. We are so thankful that you're here. We're especially glad if this is your first time or if you're a guest with us today. And we want to get connected with you. Uh, one way we do that is through a Connect card. And we've got a picture of it here on the screen. And what this Connect card allows us to do is get some information about you to keep in touch. But the coolest part of our Connect card is that you get to choose one of these four charities on here. And we want to donate $10 to that charity that you pick. So it is a totally free way for you to give back. We're just excited that you're here. And everything we do here at New Garden, we want it to benefit someone else. We want it to be good for our people, but we also want it to be good for people who are outside of these walls as well. Um, and if you do feel so inclined to give financially, I want to tell you about something cool that happened this past week. Maybe you've wondered sometimes where the money goes when you give it. And on Thursday, we were able to provide lunch for all the teachers and um, staff here at DuPont Tyler. We got Panera Box lunches, which we all know are awesome because we've had them before. And they were so, so appreciative. And we just wanted to show our appreciation for the way they serve the students here at this school. So if you are donating online or writing a check today and wondering, I wonder how this might be used, that's just one example of ways that we want to continue to serve the community here at this school. Um, one other thing that's exciting is Senior Sunday is coming up two weeks from today. We're excited to celebrate our class of 2022 and the accomplishment that it is to graduate from high school. You know, it is Mother's Day, and so I know you mothers of graduate, graduating seniors, you know it's an accomplishment for you as well, the parents. So we're excited to celebrate with them and to send them off well. So we'd love for you to join us on that day as we honor them. And if you are interested in serving with our kids ministry, today's a family Sunday, which means our kids, kindergarten through sixth graders, will stay in here. And we love having them in here. It's good to, you know, hear some chatter and to be all together um, and worship all together. But our Sprouts will have their separate worship time um, that Miss Kim will help them with. So I um, am going to pray for us and then they will exit. But first, I want to introduce a video that we're going to watch right after. And speaking of giving, we were able to be really generous with a, an organization called Kairos. And Andy has mentioned it before, and they work um, on planting churches, and they have a program which trains apprentices to be the leaders in those churches. And because of our donation, we were able to give to that organization and contribute to their apprenticeship program. So after I pray and Miss Kim will take our sprouts with her, we will watch a video from Kairos that's kind of going into more details about what that looks like. So please pray with me. Dear God, thank you so much for today and I thank you for the mothers and grandmothers and aunts and second mothers that we have and the way that they have cared for us all throughout our lives. God, we are mindful of people who have lost mothers or aren't in contact with them or all sorts of situations that may make today heavy. God, thank you so much for the ways that you care for us when people fail us. And I pray that today you will help us to be mindful of your presence here with us um, and to worship you freely. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hey, New Garden Church, I want to just take this time to thank you for your support and your donation to uh, Kairos, especially our apprenticeship program. So we received, uh, are receiving from you half of the funds and we are working for the other half, but the plan is to get uh, some of our interns, which we have about five, maybe six, get our interns into apprentice programs within the church plants and so that we can provide compensation for both the planters who mentor them as well as some of the individuals who are actually going to be mentored. I think this is important because one of the things that we've noticed is that um, our schools are not doing as good a job as preparing people for ministry and they can't. Uh, they have to do hands-on ministry and while we're working with Lipscomb to create uh, you know a certificate or a part of a degree on this area we do need our planters mentoring people kind of like a Paul and Timothy relationship and you've made that possible I want to let you know uh, we're gonna be sharing this at Pepperdine but by the end of 2022 we expect 59 or 60 people to have gone through discovery Labs, strategy labs since February 2019 now, COVID isn't stopping us and it seems like God has just been faithful and opened the floodgates we have over six almost 60 people who are wanting to prepare and train and plant churches. And so I'm looking forward to new churches, looking forward to the new one coming up soon, and we'll be able to pair you up with the new church plant. Uh, we should know by the summer, but I'm excited. And I just wanna thank you for your support and your donation. Behind me is Portland and the airport. And if you just look out and see uh, millions of people flying every year through uh, this city, just think uh, what would happen if we had churches that could just um, be hubs for millions of people every year coming to know Christ and reaching out to others. So this is Ron Clark, the Executive Director for Kairos Church Planning. Thank you for all your support and God bless you. All right, if you guys wanna stand back up and worship with us. darkness we were waiting without hope but without light till from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets there were virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt Heaven held its breath 
For that stone was moved for good For the Lamb it conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born Then the Spirit lit the flame Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, it shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Praise the Father, praise the Son, Praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings, praise forever to the King.
powerful name it is the name of Jesus what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus what a wonderful name it is the name of Jesus all right everybody you can have a seat Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Molly, so much for leading us in worship this morning. Um, It's exciting. We're here to celebrate Jesus today. That's right. You thought I was going to say mothers. We're here to celebrate Jesus as we do every Sunday. Um, And we've got moms in here. We've got dads in here. We've got uh, uncles, aunts, family members, um, and the Holy Spirit is in the room with us this morning. And so we're excited about that. Uh, We've got kids in here as well because it is a family Sunday. So kids, this is very exciting. Are you ready to have fun today? Are you having fun so far? Yeah! Are we having fun that the kids are in here with us? Yeah! Okay, great. Yeah, we're excited about that. And kids, if you all got a whiteboard when you came in this morning, we are going to play a little bit of a game. It is called, Who's That? It was a game created um, by me, and many games have been similar throughout the years. Here's the thing. On the screen is going to be a character from a movie, and I want you to write on your board who that character is. Okay? Does this sound easy? And I was told by two Whitson boys that they would get all of these right because they love movies, and I was like, we'll see about that. So we'll see. Um, Different generations will have advantages in different movies. Okay. So... First up, who is this? Don't shout it out. Don't shout it out. Take some time to write it on your whiteboards. We've got a, a boy, black hair, glasses, and that's all that we can tell about him from this picture. All right, hold up your board if you've got it. If you've got it. All right, the answer is, survey says, Harry Potter. All right, so it's the boy who lived under the stairs at his aunt and uncle's house. He was an orphan. But if you know the story, you know that he went on to be actually the central figure of like a really crazy time in a fictional world, right? And so Harry Potter came from humble beginnings. All right, next up, next character. Keep score on yourself and don't shout out what your score is. That's for you to decide what your score is. Okay. We've got this person. See, I got. I can see that she has an arrows or something back there. Um, don't don't shout out. And she's wearing a jacket. Who could that be? Write it down. Stump some of y'all. It looks like this person's name is Katniss Everdeen. All right, from the books that became movies. Well, this is Jennifer Lawrence playing Katniss Everdeen. But the story is that she's this uh, teenage girl in this area world called Panem, and they do this really terrible thing every year where they have all these teenagers go out and fight to the death until one person is alive. And anyways, it's it's a terrible society. And this girl is from the poorest district. It's this coal mining district. They're the smallest and poorest district called District 12. And the only reason that she finds herself in this tournament is because her sister was randomly selected, and she took her spot because she's a good sister. Okay, and it was her little sister, so that's pretty messed up. Okay, Katniss Everdeen. All right, humble beginnings. Smallest district, poorest district. We're going to remember that word today. All right, next up, don't shout out. Different generation this applies to maybe. Different generation. Is that Sunshine from Remember the Titans, maybe? I I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. All right, hold up your boards. Hold up your boards if you've got it. I can read scribbles as well from here. Luke Skywalker. That is right. Luke Skywalker. Now, he's this very, uh, you know, he's a young person on the planet of Tatooine. It's far away. Uh, he's, he's just living his life. He lives, he's another orphan. He lives with his Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru on Tatooine. 
And all of his friends get to go on fun adventures, but he's stuck at home all the time. Well, that was all about to change, but Luke Skywalker came from humble beginnings. And this is our last one, and this is, this is for uh, people that are in pop culture right now. Don't call out. Don't call out. Let's see. We've got a, a young, young girl, medium-aged girl, I guess, a young, a young lady. Um, green glasses. She looks like a spunky character. Okay, a spunky little character. All right. Hope y'all spelled it right, because if you didn't, it doesn't count. Just kidding. Maribel Madrigal. Okay. Mirabel. Mirabel. Hey. 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 I'm just, I'm just here to talk, and y'all are just there to listen. Okay? <laughs> All right. So, uh, yes. Mirabel Madrigal. Yes. The rest of her family... All has superpowers, right? Except her dad, because he's in her family, you know, by, he married into their family. But her grandmother, one of her sisters has super strength. The other sister is like this, so they call her Senorita Perfecta or something, where she is this beautiful woman. She can make flowers and plants grow from the ground. And Mirabel is powerless. Man, she got, she got ripped off, right? So... She's this girl, and she's the only person in her family of her siblings that doesn't have any powers. But guess what? At the end of the movie, the day needs saving, and who's it up to, right? Our main character, Mirabelle. Because in a family with everyone has superpowers, if you don't have any, that's what I like to call humble beginnings. Okay, so keep that in mind this morning, because the character that we're talking about this morning is, well... They're not who you would expect, or they're not who they would even expect to be the main, one of the main characters in such a key story in our world, okay? And that person is Mary, the mother of Jesus, okay? So um, we're going to keep talking about Mary. I'm going to pray for us, and then we'll continue on. So let's pray. Lord, we come before you this morning, and we're thankful that we have a place to be and a people to be with, and we're thankful that uh, we get to be here with um, people that we love. And uh, God, thank you for creating this cool family that we get to see every week. Uh, God, I just ask that this morning, uh, God, that you will speak in anything that I say that's not from you. Just let everybody forget about it, um, and just let us hear something from you this morning. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, we're talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus, and in the name is basically the story, but we'll keep talking about the story. So, first, though, we need to talk about a word called context. Okay, context is basically something that you know about the characters or the place or the time that helps you understand the story in a better way, okay? Um, you know, like if you heard a parent say to their child, don't leave your room yet, could be many different reasons, but we don't have context to know why. Maybe it's 5 a.m., everybody needs to stay sleeping, you know, maybe the child is in timeout, maybe it's Christmas morning, we don't know, but all that we know is that the parent needs to stay in the room. If we knew why the parent would say something like that, it would help us understand the story better. And so, when we read the Bible, like today we're going to be in Luke chapter 1 if you want to go ahead and turn there. When we read the Bible, it helps us to know something about the time or the group of people in that way that we can understand what the story might be trying to convey to us. And so Mary, we need to know that she was somebody growing up in different times, okay? Um, most girls, we know that Mary was betrothed to Joseph. Most women would get married in, in the first century, they would get married at age like 14 or 15, okay? So this is a very different world that we're living in. This is a very young person that we're talking about. She's betrothed to this guy, Joseph, who's also probably not very old. I hope not. Um, and uh, anyways, let's get to the story so that we can, we can get into it. It says this, 
In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, so Elizabeth is Mary's cousin, and an angel had come and told her, Elizabeth, that Elizabeth would be giving birth to someone who was also very important. And that person ended up being John the Baptist. But in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. Imagine Mary, because just like those characters that we were talking about before, Mary comes from humble beginnings. She's, she's just a 14 or 15-year-old girl, right? Like, like Harry Potter says, I'm, I'm not anything like that. I'm, I'm just Harry, you know? So this is just Mary we're talking about. Just Mary. But an angel shows up to her and says, hey, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Okay, now you have my attention. All right, I don't know what's about to happen next if I'm Mary. And Mary's greatly troubled about, about this because she doesn't know what's going to happen to her. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. So, angel sensing Mary is greatly troubled. Do not be afraid. You have found favor with God. That's a reassuring thing to hear. Of course, Mary has questions because she says, How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. That just can't be. And the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. So, you know, like today, if your cousin was six months pregnant, you would know. Mary didn't know. Different times, right? Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. Another miraculous birth. For no word from God will ever fail. And I don't know about you, but if I was in Mary's shoes, I would still have questions. (laughs) I would be like, yeah, you know what? I think I'd rather just do the regular life thing. I've got a plan. We are not married yet. We're going to get married. I will live with him. I'm okay with that. I'm content there. But that's not what happened. And that's not what Mary said. Mary says, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. Now, we can learn a lesson from Mary here because sometimes, uh, if you're like me, we might think, you know what? I think it would be a good thing if I did that. But I don't want to do that. I'm just going to not do that and do whatever else I was already planning on doing because I'm comfortable there. It's easy. I know how to do that. It'll be good. That's not what Mary says. She responds, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. And so something that we can learn from this story is that when God makes a promise, we can count on it. Um, and this is hard for me because I'm a, I'm a classic control freak, okay? Any other control freaks in there? I'll see y'all at our support group later. Um, we, we uh, people like me, we want to have a plan. We want to know what's happening. And we want to know that other people know what they're doing so that we can only have to do what we're supposed to do, right? Uh, we're terrible to work with in a group project, things like that. But part of of faith in God is having that trust that I trust that this is what God is calling me to and I don't have to know all the details right now. I don't have to have everything lined up of how it's going to be, but I can trust that God has a plan for for me and us and this thing that I, I feel like God's calling us to. So when God makes a promise, we can count on it. Another thing that we can learn from this story 
is God calls people based on their heart, not on the other stuff. So there's this story in 1 Samuel chapter 16, and it's this uh, prophet, and he's sent to the house of Jesse. And Jesse has all of these sons, and the prophet, Samuel, has been told by God that one of these sons is going to be the new king of Israel, the next king of Israel. And so Samuel goes to this house of Jesse, and he's got all of these tall, strong-looking young boys. You know, I see some strong, tall-looking young boys in here. You know, it could be any of them, right? And uh, he's like, man, that's, a, that's, a, that's probably him right there. He's, he's big, he's strong, he, he looks confident and competent. And what God says to Samuel, he says, hey, Samuel, I, I don't care about their outside appearance. I care about their heart. And so this is not just a story that's in Samuel. It's not just a story that applies to Mary. It's all throughout the Bible of God calling people, not because of what they already can do, but of what God can do with them. And so that's something that we can remember And it's something that this story about Mary teaches us. Because we know that Mary gave birth to Jesus, and Jesus is the reason that we're here. She had a pretty big part in it. And it wasn't because she came from a rich family. It wasn't because she had superpowers or anything like that. She was just Mary. She was just a 14, 15-year-old girl in the first century. And everything changed because of her faith, and she said yes to this. So another thing. God uses people who we would never expect. You know, I don't know about you, but I just wouldn't expect a virgin to have a child, right? Shocking, okay? This is not something that we would expect. Um, You know, we wouldn't expect, like, if, you know, sometimes I think, man, if I was God, I would choose, like, somebody with, I I would create someone in a lab in in my God lab to be the perfect person, and they can go and do all the good stuff in the world, like, like the Incredibles or, you know, Superman or something like that. But God uses people who we wouldn't expect. You know, and this is something that Jesus talks about through his ministry all the time. Jesus, you know, he's got tax collectors who are viewed, you know, unfavorably in in their world. They're viewed unfavorably, um, but Jesus still calls them to follow him and makes them, you know, his his right-hand men. You know, Matthew, Levi, one of Jesus' apostles, is a tax collector. You know, Jesus tells this story um, in Luke, in Luke, uh, and it's called the Good Samaritan. You might know it as that. But it's really a story about how the person that you least expect to help you can be the one that helps you. That God can use the person you expect the least to do the most. Because the priest walked right past that person who was down in the ditch, and the Levite walked right past that person who was down in the ditch. You know, for our terms, like, the preacher walked right past that person, and Michael definitely did. And then, all of a sudden, this person who you wouldn't expect, so whoever that might be in your thoughts, someone you wouldn't expect to help, in their world, a Samaritan helping a Jewish person, unheard of. But God uses people who we would never expect. This is something that we see all through Jesus' ministry. You know, if you read the book of Mark, I would recommend it. It's like 16 chapters. You could read it in two weeks if you read a chapter a day. Well, two weeks and two days. But it's this amazing story about how Jesus is changing, how Jesus has this view for the world that's different than ours, that the first will be the last and the last will be first. And this is something that we see in this story with Mary, because She's not a person of influence. She's not a person of wealth. She hasn't proven anything, but God sees her heart. She has found favor with God. And so Mary, she goes over to her cousin Elizabeth's house because she's like, what? I heard you're pregnant. That's so great. I'm pregnant too. And that's a miracle. Okay. And this is the song that Mary gives us. It's in Luke chapter 1. She says this, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. Me! I'm I'm just Mary. 
For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. See, first, last, first, last. He has filled the hungry with good things, but he has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Because when God makes a promise, you can take that to the bank. Um, God takes our world and flips it upside down. And isn't it funny that these are the stories that we still love, that we still write books and make movies about these characters who came from humble beginnings, and then somehow it all came down to them in the end? God has instilled that mentality in us, this this love for humble beginnings, and those people matter too. And so... I want to end with this, um, this truth that God can use us when we don't expect it. Mary, she's just Mary. It doesn't, we don't know anything about how she, you know, there wasn't some prophecy about her that she would be the mother of Jesus or anything like that. She's just a regular old 14, 15-year-old girl in first century, just living her life. You know, probably going down to the water well and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, her whole life changes because God has put a plan in her heart. And quite literally, inside of her, she will be giving birth to God's plan for the world. And that's a beautiful thing. And sometimes I think we go through the world thinking, I don't have anything to offer. I don't have anything to offer that person. Um, you know, I, I just work here. You know, um, God can use us in so many different ways. You know, maybe maybe you're a parent since it's Mother's Day. Maybe maybe you're a parent, and maybe you weren't trying to be a parent right now or ever. And all of a sudden, you're in that role. Wow, God can use you in that. Um, God can use you at work when a coworker's like, "So um, you act a little bit different than everybody else. So what's the deal with that? Can you tell me about that? God can use you in those moments. Um, when you're in the checkout line at the grocery store and someone drops a jar of spaghetti sauce, which I have done in the grocery store, drops a jar of spaghetti sauce and it explodes all over your pants. Okay? How do you respond in that moment? God can use us when we don't expect it. And that's something that I think we can leave here today um, with that on our hearts and that we can go out of here from a place of humble beginnings and we can go out with great expectations into the world of what God can do with us when we just say, I am your servant. May your will be done in my life. And let's do that this week. Um, So we're about to go to the table. Uh, We have three different communions set up here. Um, And we'll go to the table. And, you know, uh, since our kids are in here this morning, I want you all to use your whiteboards for this because we do communion in our kids' area every week. It's probably my favorite time of what we do. And so I always ask a few questions. Uh, Question number one is, do you all know what we're about to do right now? Okay. And so write that down on your boards. Bentley says, yes, good. What word are we about to do? Starts with a C, and I've said it a couple times. That's good. You know what it is. Okay, communion. That's right. And when we go up here, and we're going to take a piece of bread, and we're going to drink some juice, and this symbolizes Jesus' body and blood coming into our lives And we remember Jesus, what Jesus has done in our lives because of that. And so, um, yeah, I'll pray for us, and then we'll go to the table together. um, And uh, Molly will lead us on in worship after that. So let's pray. Lord, uh, thank you for this morning. Thank you that we have 
just some really great people here. Um, God, I just ask that uh, you will fill us with your spirit this week, God, that we uh, will believe that you have a plan for us, um, no matter how we're feeling about ourselves in that moment or anything like that, God, we can trust that you will do amazing things with us. God, help us to believe that. Help me to believe that. Um, And as we go to the table this morning, help us to remember Jesus. God, that, that, that Jesus changed the world, and it's all because somebody who didn't expect anything out of their life said yes to what you said to them. So all that, God, we just put at your feet. And in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Molly. Uh, Hope that y'all all all have a blessed day and a great week, going out with great expectations for what God can do in you. Have a great week.